All right, let's open this meeting. It's, um, give me the right time, 6.35. Sure. I believe, yep. all right, this public meeting is uh, posted in accordance of MGL Chapter 30A, 20B. The proceedings will be videotaped by Area 58 and rebroadcast. Uh, this uh, particular room is room meeting room two, very unusual for us, but nonetheless, it's a busy thing. First on the agenda is uh, Tom Bott. I had asked Tom to come up. Uh, to talk with us. I had uh, four things that I wanted some answers to and uh, and I'm sure he can t tackle all that. Uh, Tom, am I hoping if you have a few minutes somebody might want to ask you a question that you could take I'm, a I'm, question. I'm, I'm good with the planning board meeting starts at 7 so we have okay, great. 28 so, leisure minutes. Okay. All right. What yeah. can happen in 20? They're going to do a whole sit-down in 20 minutes. Oh, all right. Sure. You can talk fast too, I know. So the first thing uh, I wanted to find out about about that uh, grant, I think I got the wrong number. Is it thirty or forty thousand? Uh, so uh, we submitted it's forty. Okay, it's forty. Uh, so uh, we're with uh, Glenn. Uh, I mean uh, George McLaughlin and Glenn Cannon. Uh, we submitted a forty thousand dollar Mass Works grant uh, to study the North Carver Water District plan and basically uh, do a short uh, uh, to, to look study the water quality issues. Uh, at the plant uh, and look at uh, how to deal, uh, deal with some of the issues with the little bit of pressure uh, and uh, the lack of water and the lack of, uh, of, um, of uh, processing. It's been much talked about in lots of different places about the differences between Carver and Middleborough and their water treatments. So this was a $40,000 grant we proposed to Mass Works. Uh, I oh, Mass Works. Oh, okay. uh, Mass Works. I think I shared this with the RDA uh, at our, the RDA, not the RDA, the North Carver Water District at the last meeting I was at. Uh, and uh, actually, George McLaughlin, I think, probably could have most of that, but Glenn. I saw it. Glenn, I, I, Glenn I saw the tape. So it's a $40,000 grant. We're supposed to find out something in September. This is uh, September. This month. Yes. Okay. Soon, maybe. Well, oh, the end of September. Well, maybe. you know. Uh, yeah, it takes time, right? People always, you know, you have to have a target. Okay. Uh, hopefully, not on your back. Uh, but you have to have a target, and their target is in September. Okay. So sometimes it takes a little longer to review things. Uh, but okay. we haven't heard. So I have, I'm, I'm not that familiar with grants and how they work, but say let's assume that it is accepted and you are, you are awarded the grant. Um, what is the next step? Can you spend the money? Do you have to? Bet, uh, what do you do? Well, the first part of the uh, of the grant is to figure out what the problems are. Oh, okay. So you know, we get forty thousand dollars and we figure out you know what needs to be fixed at the plant. Uh, the grant uh, in the proposal has a second phase as well that says if we figure out what's wrong with the grant, here here's what we would do in those second stages. Uh, the people who prepared that were on site engineering who was recently acquired by Fuss and O'Neill which is our consulting engineer oh, okay. uh, they did that work on behalf of Hillwood which is why uh, George McLaughlin uh, uh, provided that information that Hillwood had because they had done essentially that assessment to see you know what it might take so 40 grand uh, to study the plan okay decision likely in September uh, and if we get the money uh, We'll take it from there. Yeah. And so, all right. And, and I will say, at the time we did the grant, uh, there was only one member of the North Carver Water District. Uh, so it's not like we could have uh, communed with the North Carver Water District at the time because there was only one member. Okay. Uh, and the grant deadline was when the grant deadline was. Well, the people who were there, you, you included professionals, and you've included yeah. well, the engineering study. I can't, you can't do anything more than yeah. that. So we shall see. Does anybody from the board want to ask anything more on that grant? Okay. No, that's no? pretty clear. So can you give us some feedback from Route 44 of the real estate? Have you talked with George? I personally don't pick up the phone and speak with him. I mean, it's not a That's person. not a bad thing. It's not? No, that's not a bad thing. Oh, I don't have his phone number. You better. Uh, I don't know. So, uh, so I'd rather leave it to yeah, some more yeah. professional people. Though. So, you know, we, 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 we're in touch uh, on a regular basis, not daily or anything like that. Uh, but he's got a couple prospective tenants that he would uh, love to get on. Uh, not 11 million square foot. Uh, but uh, much smaller uh, units. Uh, but as I've explained in various venues, uh, before they can bring somebody onto a piece of property, uh, they have to build a subdivision. 
so they have to build the subdivision, they have to have all the infrastructure in place, uh, the pipes and things like that in the ground. Uh, and then the planning board will do an inspection, uh, require a bond to ensure the subdivision is completed. And at that point that there's been an inspection, the subdivision has a bond in place for surety, uh, then they're allowed to sell a lot to somebody. Oh. And when the developer sells a lot to somebody, that starts the process of coming to the planning board for site plans and special permits. And likely just about anything on the property would require a special permit. I have a, a couple questions. Hold on. Um, when George was at our meeting, he told us how um, he was in contact with Eversource because they're only a mile down the road in Middleborough and they could be putting the extended what is it electricity lines, and gas yeah. what is it his lines that he would do yeah okay lines. right exactly and he also was telling us that uh, obviously some of the revenue that he could be uh, taking from those land lots to be sold um, would help him to do that um, how he conducts his business is it's, his business. Okay, uh, all right. But what he has to do is meet the requirements of the regulations of the tax department. Okay. Uh, which is build a subdivision, have an inspection, produce a bond to make sure it's completed as required. Okay. Uh, and then he's allowed to settle. Does he have any sort of timeline? Um, yeah, that's my question. Yeah, because uh, you're getting into the cold season here shortly. So uh, if he's well, going to be doing a lot of earthwork and. Well, well the good news is, is that it doesn't get that cold anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know how that goes this winter. Yeah. Yes, it was last winter. Yeah, we're, 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 we're due. Uh, he, he, uh, he says uh, he hopes to have construction start in April of 25. Oh, all right. Okay. How long is there as the, um, the approval of the subdivision plan good for? Uh, subdivision plans are good for uh, two years, uh, but can be extended for good cause. Okay. And you have to start, you don't have to finish in those two years. When was right. the first one approved for the Tillwood guys? Um, I'm going to go with April of this year. Yeah. It was, oh, it's not that long ago then. Okay. Yeah, the subdivision has been through a few different iterations. There was uh, the subdivision that was there initially when, uh, when uh, um, you know, the last five years when I got here, there was a subdivision plan in place. So what they did is a process of things called rescission. So the rescission basically wipes the slate clean. It's like, here's the subdivision on paper, there's lines on the plan, there's where roads are going to be, where lots are going to be. Mm -hmm. So the rescission plan essentially wipes the slate clean. So everything within, I'm going to use round numbers because I don't have the number right in front of me, of their 200 plus acre property just became one 200 acre parcel mm -hmm. with frontage on uh, Montella Street. The second thing they came back with was a preliminary plan, which is required for a non-residential subdivision, and then a residential subdivision plan, which put the new roadway in place where it's at now. So the roadway configuration from what has originally, was originally proposed has changed. Uh, the lots have, uh, are different from what was on there before. Uh, and at this point, uh, you can change lot sizes around uh, and uh, with an A&R process where you come to the planning board and say we'd like to move these lot lines around if the roadway's in place. So they may have some tweaks to the subdivision they want to do. A tweak to the subdivision would include, would involve changing the road. So the road has to be in the place that it was in, but the lots can change, right. lot lines can shift uh, by, by filing on an A&R plan. And if you want any information or coaching on filing an A&R plans, we are people at the table who are well aware of them, uh, including me. Uh, so um, we expect to see, uh, we've had some conversations with the engineering company, they may be you know, uh, making some changes to their road elevations. So um, we'll see they're going through that, uh, mm -hmm. that calculus on their side. Uh, but his goal still uh, from George is to start construction in April of uh, April 2025. And he's still looking at about a 700,000 square foot building? Is that what he was talking about with us? Um, I don't think I've got those specific numbers in here, but there was a couple of different folks. Uh, That's all right. Uh, a, a couple of a, a couple of different uh, vendors they were looking at at the site, and of course, you know, that's uh, you typically as a developer you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't want to invest too much in a piece of property unless you knew you had somebody on the hook. Uh, and at the same time, those people who are buying the property are typically buying them contingent on permits and. You know, I don't 
what I do for a living. Yeah. So, so this I I'm, I got a guy who's got a guy, and oh, these conditions we move into the property. So that's where they're. Yeah, nobody wants to purchase until you have the approvals from the town. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can purchase a piece of land straight up for a lot less than you can purchase it contingent on permits. Because if you got the permits, you know you're going to break ground. If you buy the land raw without any permits in place, it's cheaper, but you're at your own risk. Mm -hmm. Most people have a buyer. But during the course of the process, you know, who knows what happens? Could be a war, could be a recession, could be a, uh, an epidemic. We've had them all recently. Okay. So, based on what you said, I'm not big on all those plans and construction and stuff like that, but if you're going to start construction April 2025, that means George is going to be working pretty diligent between now and this time frame. Uh, he's got to get this road or infrastructure. Um, he talked about electricity and all this other stuff that he thought he could get from Middleborough, you know, and so forth. And so on. The only prohibition in uh, for about utilities in the subdivision agreement is from our meeting with Mass DEP that said, "Do not connect the pipes in the ground to the plant." So one of the conditions is you cannot connect the pipes in the ground. To the North Carver Water District plant because of its uncertain nature. Ah, okay. 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 Uh, next one here, um, I had uh, asked, well, we had talked about it uh, amongst us at board members, and we felt very strong about wanting to have it, two members of the RDA present at a site review. And we, with your permission, would you allow us to, because you- At a you site could, review, like- Am I saying it right, uh, say Well, a site review plan, just as, a, as, you know, not a participant, but a, uh, a audience. To, a seat uh, at the table. Uh, a, or a, a seat in the room as opposed to a seat yeah. at the table, perhaps. Oh, okay. yeah. uh, so when plans come out, uh, you know, they typically get jobbed out to uh, those people who have some sort of uh, uh, regulatory uh, manner, but I'm sure that we can you know, afford a, uh, a set of plans for the RDA. Right, because there were a couple of things that we were in on back in the Hillwood days. I, go, yeah. I, I went to a couple of site plan reviews yeah. mm -hmm. when the room was full of, of people. So. How would this notification come to us, though? So when uh, when we get an application for a site plan, uh, we put it on the website, on the planning board's website, and we distribute the materials to uh, the various boards and committees that get that sort of stuff. Most of the stuff is, is electronic, oh, so okay. it's not like we have to ask somebody for an extra copy. Okay. Uh, but we do get hard copies as well. Okay. So we could be put on your list for, for distribution? Uh, I'll, if, yeah, if you send me an email and, and ask me, I, I remember things much better if I can look back at them. Okay. Uh, no problem. Emails. Yeah, we can do that. You drop me a line that okay. says, please include the RDA on any future site plans in the Route 44 and let the Green Business Park District. Okay. So, Bob is. Uh, Bob, um, well, Delhom, but uh, George is planning on beginning his infrastructure in April. Yep, build the road, okay. moving dirt, to, to green, okay. because there's, uh, you just don't, you know, go out there and pave the dirt. Mm -hmm. No, I know, I am. All right. All right, so we, all right, so there, the, uh, the spade in the ground is April, first bit. Mm -hmm. okay. Fanfare, perhaps? Are there any turtles up there? Um, <laughs> Probably not living. Uh, okay. <laughs> Based on what you just, folks have done, it's just curious. Years. You know how they. There is a turtle. It's probably a ninja turtle, and it's a bad ass. <laughs> it's probably a mutant. Yeah, by the, at this point, yeah. there's a turtle. I'm just aware of how turtles can delay things. Turtles have great lawyers. Oh wow, yeah. that's all we need. <laughs> The last one, and I'm uh, just asking you if you could recommend a meeting date to invite Route 44, both George and, and uh, Bob, I don't, you know, based on what you just told us. What would you recommend us trying to invite him? Do we, you know? Well, he's yeah. been perfectly willing to show up at a meeting if you ask him. Yeah, if they're not putting a, a shovel in the ground till April, though, I don't see any reason to bring bring them in until February. February? January or February, yeah. yeah. okay. Because they may be a little bit further along in their process of, of who they might be um, negotiating, you know, negotiating with and, and what they're going to need. But 
you know, if they were going to start in October or November, I would say let's bring them in soon. But if we've got if we've got six months before they, so uh, you already hired all those engineers and everything too. So yeah, uh, uh, Bowler Engineering has been doing the engineering for them. So. Yeah, they've been all along. Okay. Well. Right. So I, yeah, I would say after the first of the year, probably, yeah, probably okay. February. All right. Let me just put that down here. Well, then, if anything changes and you something comes up and you feel that you know it would be important for us to invite him, just do that. Do sure. that. Send me an email. Any more questions of, of Tom? Um, I you know I know that I know that uh, Bob Belvin is here to, for our next uh, agenda item. I'm just wondering if there's anything that the two of them can share with us uh, regarding North Carver Water well, District. We've, I've had a lot of questions from uh, from my boss, uh, the new town administrator, about the uh, water for the property, uh, and I think Bob has uh, and. Uh, uh, we want to take the, the captain's chair here since we're talking about your eye. So uh, Glenn has asked me uh, to look in and find out if I could find any sort of agreement. Pa pass that to Tom. Oh, thank you. If I could find any sort of agreement um, where um, the water commissioners were going to be supplying water to Route 44 development, mm -hmm. I have not. Uh, there is a memorandum of understanding with the water commissioners, with uh, um, North Carver Water Commission in Hillwood, mm -hmm. but not for Route 44. Okay. And nowhere in this agreement does it say Route 44. It says HIPV Enterprises. Uh, Hillwood intends to purchase this property on which Hillwood intends to develop a warehouse and a distribution center with associated improvements, the pro quote, the project. Right. Um, on page three of the memorandum, it says that uh, hereby agrees to reserve a supply of potable water for the property in amount not to exceed a total of 40,000 gallons per day of water to flow from the district to the project, quote, project, mm -hmm. that would be Hillwood's project, for a warehouse a distribution center and associated improvements. Uh, Hillwood, uh, let's see, there's one more. Uh, Hillwood shall have the right to terminate this MOU if Hillwood either does not close on the purchase of the property or does not obtain all final and local, state, and federal permits that we have talked about, in which the allocation of uh, no less than 40,000 gallons of water per day from the district to the project. So in the research that I have done, I have found no information that says anything about an agreement between Hillwood, I mean, between the North Carver Water District and Route 44. And what was the date of that memorandum? Uh, that is uh, March 2022. So my email to the town, and I'm going to leave all these things with you. Uh, okay. The okay. So my email to the town administrator today, uh, I wrote back, Dear Glenn, I have reviewed the six-page intermunicipal agreement between the town of Carver and the North Carver Water District, signed 12-13-10. And see no def new, see new reference see no references providing any amount of water to the perspective any prospective entity. I did note on page four, item number four, in other regards, in other respects, with regard to providing water, public water within the uh, North Carver Water District, the respective responsibilities of the town and district shall be set forth in the act. That is the act to create the North Carver Water District. Page five, item nine says, in order to provide future needs for the district service area. The other remaining pages of the 12 pages, I think this is something that Bob sent to Glenn, uh, were from various sources, it looks like from the FEIR as well as from the Urban Renewal Plan. Um, a statement from the FEIR that says it will use up to 38,000 gallons per day and generate 38,000 gallons per day of wastewater. Uh, and lastly, on page 12 of that various source document includes a statement that water and water wastewater, provisions of portable water, will be from the North Carver Water District. It is anticipated that the development will be required a, will require a water tank to provide adequate pressure and flow for the fire district for the buildings anticipated to be constructed. 
based on conversations with the water district, there is adequate capacity in their system to accommodate the proposed development with the addition of a water tank. I also read the legislature, uh, the Acts of 2008, Chapter 124, establishing the North Carver Water District, and found no specific references to the North Carver Water District to supply any amount of water uh, to any amount of user, uh, to any specific user. So there apparently was an agreement with uh, Hillwood, uh, the water commissioner, previous water commissioner I had spoken to said, uh, told me yes, there was an agreement, and if there's another agreement, then certainly the water commissioners. Uh, I said, well, if this is an agreement with Hillwood, and if Hillwood has come back, you know, there's an agreement. He goes, but if Hillwood was to come back for some reason, um, he recommended the water commissioners negotiate an entirely new deal, which is what you'd expect. Um, and I think we heard at the North Carver Water District meeting, which was news to me, that it was uh, not Hillwood who pulled out, but it was Route 44 development that didn't extend the purchase and sale agreement. Yeah, I saw that. So I saw that. we sort of thought it was Hillwood leaving, but it was uh, Route 44 uh, saying, no, we're not going to send the deal. Yeah, they were going to go on their own. Yeah. They figured they had to. <clears throat> All right, I got six minutes. All right, well, Joanna, that kind of uh, what Tom just said kind of um, contradicts what uh, Will Sinclair told you. Yeah. Kind of. Well, uh, what Will Sinclair, let me say what to Tom, what Will told me. Will told me that um, the diff map, uh, and I, that's why I asked you yep. for that map, and it, it showed uh, all the places which included, and uh, that all the, and, and the betterment as well. And so he said that that area was to get water. Now, their landowners. Yeah, North Carver Water District gets water, but no specific individual gets no specific amount uh, to provide water. Uh, and as I've said before, in the absence of a water tank built by the developer for this property, I don't see how they have a viable development there because they have to have right. water for fire suppression. Yep. Uh, and in every development, every project I have ever seen, uh, Developers supply the infrastructure. Sometimes yeah. there's public-private partnerships where they do a grant together and some matching funds. Uh, but for the most part, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, developers provide the infrastructure and then typically tend to turn it over to the town, whether they're water lines or streets or something. Like that. Wasn't there discussion about that about a tank? I just wonder there was discussion about a tank. Whether it was a town meeting when it got opened up at one point. There's discussion about a tank. Oh, it's, in, it, there it's, was. it's in everything. It's in the FBIR, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in the urban redevelopment. It's in. It yeah. was there. Now, yeah. of course, it's all squashed now. It's, mm -hmm. it's a done well, deal. Well, actually, I no. think there was a zoning bylaw change, uh, too, that, I, that included the water tower, I yeah. believe, when we did all of those. Yeah, but somebody still has to build it. Right. Yeah. Yes, and and all along it was uh, it it was Hillwood when Hillwood was playing was in play. Right. They were going to build it. They were actually going to do a dual, a dual system. They were going to have the tower with potable water, for fighting yeah, in, an interior fire. And they were going to have on-site water storage tanks with a pump, right. for external fires like trucks in the parking right. lot. And as some development processes come back, all that stuff will be opened back up to, to get yeah. to that point. But at this point, with a subdivision plan, it's about, uh, and this is my Advent Christmas story, uh, is that the subdivision is Advent. These are the boxes. Right. Uh, but this isn't Christmas. Right. You just yeah. get boxes with yeah. a subdivision plan. Special permit uh, is, right. uh, is, is Christmas or, or Hanukkah or, or Kwanzaa or whatever you want to call it, right. uh, where you get gifts. You get nothing but boxes with a subdivision plan, and okay. that's why the board has a lot more discretion with a, sub with a special permit than the subdivision plan. Because Massachusetts general law says the planning board shall approve the subdivision plan right. if, it meets your, if it meets your regulations. Right. Okay. So is the word that uh, Glenn is looking for guarantee? They yeah, he kept asking me. He goes, "Have you got anything that says North Carver owes Route 44?" Water? I'm like, I have not seen a thing. All right. Yeah. That's messed up. Okay. All right. Thank you. He's Infrastructure, good. construction, assembly of the project area into a viable disposition parcel Thanks. will allow efficient Tom. cost effective Thanks. layout, Thank you. design, construction, roadway <coughs> Thank you. to ensure proper access and egress 
two in circulation within the site. It will also allow the required infrastructure, including stormwater control, streetscape, improvements, lighting, tree planting, and extended available water supply from the North Cabo Water District for potable and fire protection. While the project area is in close proximity to excellent roadway, transportation, access, and municipal water, it has limited utility infrastructure. That's from the urban renewal plan. That's what the, the urban renewal plan was created. That's what it said that what the page, urban, your page is on that? I didn't put it on this one. Okay. But it's in the urban renewal plan. That's what it says. That it's supposed to provide potable water, correct? Okay. Yeah. And extending water supply from the North Cabo Water District for portable use and fire protection. But no guarantee on gallons for any amount? No. To the, any part and of that's all depend the gallons that the urban renewal plan area would be would all be dependent on what type of businesses are there. All right, and that has not been discussed with anybody because we're not there yet. Right, okay. Because that right. seems kind of in line with what they're saying here at the original uh, Hillwood situation. It was one big oh, one big massive. building as yeah. opposed right. to now we're talking about individual little units. Yeah. So it's it's a whole right. new argument. But again, that, no what what Bob just read is is a is the urban renewal plan making sure the property has water. Exactly. Right. Right. Not the owner. Exactly. Right. Okay. That's good. that's what and I wish he was here and heard that to bring it back and hopefully the town administrator sees this because they, they've all been given this. Right. I provided this to them. <laughs> And um, I think that urban renewal plan that was created, that's a legal document. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. That's a legal document. And we have, to provide, we have to provide water to that site. And they're taxpayers of this town, no matter what. And the water line goes through that, by that property, we have to provide water. No if, answer, question about it. How we provide that water is still yet to be determined. And how much. And how much. Okay. Um, he did discuss, uh, George did discuss this at the last meeting um, that we had that's on Area 58 um, of the limited amount of water they used with these two new potential uh, mm -hmm. developments. Yep. Uh, yeah, he mentioned that to us. When he was so, um, and it's, it's not a whole lot, right. but it's a start. My my personal feeling, and I'm just saying, my personal feeling is, is that once water is to that site, it makes it more of a beneficial site yes. to go ahead and develop. It's more sellable, sure. Most definitely. Yeah. Well, here's my question. As Tom said, they're they're looking for something like guarantee. How is George going to ensure sale of property if you can't put give them water? I mean, is George on the, what, what is George doing? Is he coming back to the town administrator and is he saying to them, wait a minute, we have this urban renewal plan, quote unquote, the project, which has been signed off by all the select board. I mean, I have a copy of that. <clears throat> we have a copy of that. All, they were all there in 2015. They all signed off on that whole big project. Now, what he's reading, black and white, says, you have to have water on there. Now, do you have to work, keep using the word guarantee? Are they looking for a contract? Well, his tenants are going to look for it because his tenants are going to want, like he was talking about, his tenants are going to want a whole development plan that's out there that supplies water, sewer, storm sewer, electricity. I mean, that's nobody's going to buy a piece of dirt from you unless they're like a farmer if it doesn't have all that. Exactly. There. I mean, commercial developments, there's always some sort of... When you show up, this is what you're going to get. Well, and that's already done. The definitive subdivision plan is done. That has all the infrastructure. But the question that I have for you, and, and maybe you know this, maybe not, um, have, have you looked at that subdivision plan? Do, is there a diameter of, of water pipe that, that um, has an allowance for a certain amount of gallons per day? That's up to the developer of how big he really wants to go into that. Should, shouldn't and it already be in that plan, though? It should be on the plan, but I, I don't know what it is. I okay. haven't looked at it. And really, to be honest, right now, that's not my concern. 
to be totally okay. honest, okay. it's not my concern right now because right now we have a non-functioning water plant that doesn't provide water. Yes, that I that I understand. So, and yeah, yeah. we don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. Is if it's still going to be there, we don't know. Okay. Okay. And this is the problem that we have is that. Um, and this has already been explained, and George explained it too, is that Middleborough only has so much water that they can give to people. Um, they have a school system that wants water from them. They have other towns that want water from them. So all these places are asking for water from Middleborough. And um, a private development is not high on the priority list for Middleborough, right. in my, my opinion, for this. Uh, I think it's George's also. Um, so his only way of getting water is from Carver. From the North Carver Water District. Um, and, and that's where he's throwing all of his marbles in to say, okay, we need to fix this thing. And as you saw, um, he worked with the town to create this grant, even though I told the town administrator specifically, don't use um, Route 44 development with a grant. We need to be separate and distinct. We can't have any conflicts um, with the project at all. Um, if you do, we need to put it out there to the public to say how this was done and, and the reason why we're doing this. And this clearly wasn't done that way because they were part of it. Um, so the grant for, for development. The gra they're part of the of the uh, grantee. They grant no. They they helped craft. They can Route craft 44, it. you mean? Yeah. yeah. Route 44 well, helped craft Even though craft. I, like I said, I thought it would be my opinion would say, okay, you know what? Have the town planner do this. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. It's the town, because the town's doing it. We were out of it. I okay. was the only member. We didn't have two other members to turn around and vote this in. This okay. grant goes through the town of Carver, so they're the applicants, okay. not the North Carver. But Water it was written District. by George. Or... In, I don't know, I don't know who George. wrote it, but they were part of it. The grant request, okay. They were part of it. Okay. Um, he does have one other option. Depending upon how much it costs uh, that he's got to put in for this North Carver Water District, he could go back to Middleborough with a sniper and say, look, it's going to cost me $200,000 of this. I'll give you hundred grand if you connect me. So I'm just saying it's not his only option, depending upon what we ask him to do and the costs that are associated with there's always somebody else that he could talk to in this case. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if, that, if there's a supply out there and Middleborough can look at it in some way that maybe they get, I'm just throwing this out there, okay, just as a, a thought process that, you know, you go through as a real estate developer that he's got two options. So if you go back to him and say that this is option A is the only way we want it and it's an exorbitant amount of money, then he's going to have to look for option B. And option B may be going back to the town of Middleborough and saying, look, these guys want 200 grand for me. It doesn't make my development work. The return isn't right. I'll give you 100 grand, and then I'll pay you for the water, and then I'll pay some sort of special tax on top of it as long as the development's there. So and there's other ways around. So I just want to explain that. So the issue with that is is that Middleborough would have to provide water, a separate water line through Carver in order to just go to his his place or they have to provide water to the whole town not only now but forever and that would include if more houses become contaminated in the water and it's going to happen we know it's going to happen there are going to be more contaminations they got to provide more water to more houses and more houses so this isn't just like a all right here we have 140 houses or properties getting water it could expand up to 150 200 houses, it could be a lot more. And at what point does Middle World turn around and say, We can't keep putting water into that? So I'm just saying that there's options. That's yeah. all you have to think about is if you're the real estate developer, yeah. you've got to look at it both ways. And that's what I'm saying is us as a board, us as a town, you have to. You have to take that into consideration and not just heap the entire burden on one person and say, you're responsible for all of this. You know, you, that's so also, but yes, also sir. in that is if we're a town and we're sitting there saying the North Carver Water uh, District is not working cu currently now, right? It's not working currently now. It's not able to support the burden <clears throat> that we have or we need to have it do. What's the number? Is it, it, what's the number it's going to take to get that up and operational to be able to supply the North North Carver with water? What's that going to be? And that's what we need to look at because North Carver divert, deserves to have that working. So, what's that going to cost the town? And if he's and if the uh, 
Route 44 is going to tap into that. Well, what's his contribution into making that work? And that's what he's going to be using is, what, 38000 40, 40, uh, gallons a day? Uh, if that's what he's going to be using, what's that cost going to be? So he should pay his fair share. Well, he's going to pay you for the usage. He's going to pay for the usage. We're just talking about the infrastructure costs about putting the North Carver Water District. All I'm saying is that if you can build, make up a number. Let's say he can build a million square feet on there. But then you can, on top of that, build another million square feet somewhere else. Uh, just my opinion, you can't put the entire onus on one guy if he's gonna, if that's gonna serve a lot more than just there. All right. Right. So um, fair share. That's all. No. It, yeah. It is, and the cost factor. That's we don't know. I can tell you right now, walking in that the first time I walked in. I should say the second time. Because the first time is when they shut it down. Second time is when I really looked at the whole place out there and just shook my head and said, these were professional operators. And, I mean, how do you have exposed wires? How do you have chemicals caked on instruments? And uh, why is it so dirty and, and mice infested? And, um, I mean, it, just, it was lack of uh, maintenance, lack of upkeep. Um, is that what took the plant down, or is it the membranes? No, I, well, that's part of it. I mean, the membranes needed to be replaced. Yeah. They only last maximum 10 years, okay? And they waited for them to go before they replaced them. And that's where you think about it and say, hey, am I going to wait till something breaks, or am I going to turn around and plan ahead of time for it? Right. Okay, and that's what happened. It was, and the operators of the plant, that was their responsibility to go ahead and tell the North Cabo Water District chairman and the, the board to say, hey, this needs to be done. We need to do this now or it's going to go down. And bottom line is, it is. They had a compressor that was leaking for a long time. The compressor's leaking oil. Why is it leaking oil? They had a rag on top of it with oil. So how do you turn around and do that? I mean, but we had, like I said, we're not water operators. Okay, none of the commissioners are water operators, okay? That's not our job, and it wasn't their job back there, but their job was to oversee and to get knowledgeable, and it didn't happen. So there's a lot of people that can point fingers at what the issues were and what happened. Right now, we're in the point of we have to find out with this grant and with an engineering plan to say, hey, what's wrong with the plant? How's it gonna cost to fix the plant to get it back up and running the way it is now? Uh, how can we make it more efficient? And then say, if we, if we can't do that, all right, then what do we do then? Do we convert it over to a chlorine-based system like Middleborough has? And that, like I said, we can go back and try to find out from that was in there before and say, hey, why did you put a xenon plant where no one else around you has one? Rhode Island, there's one in Rhode Island, okay? They don't use this type of plant. Everyone uses a chlorine-based system, all right, with sand, green sand and chlorine. That's what they use. It's it's cheap. It, it works, and um, it, it's it's. I, I don't understand. But do we convert it to that system like everyone else? If we do that, then it's compatible with Middleborough. It's compatible with. Um, Plymouth. It's compatible with other towns. So it makes it a lot more viable for us if we do do that. How much is going to cost it? It's going to be less than what the $6.75 million we put into it admittedly, originally because we're just converting it over, but it's still going to cost us millions of dollars to do so it. You've been, so have you been looking for uh, bids on this? I mean, have we been getting numbers? Have we put the feelers out and said, listen, this is what we need to look for? You know, is there anybody locally that's like putting together numbers to look at so that the town can start thinking so about this? That's what the grant's for. Yeah. That's what the grant's, so that's that's what the grant's, what the grant's for. for. Stop. Just start looking for that. Yeah. Well, to, they, get the, to get to a place where there is a, so a, a solution. So it's an engineering study, study right? For. That's what those guys are going to come up with. Okay, so because I, I knew Tom had said, there, you know, to f fart around and look around what needs to be looked at, that's what it falls under. That's the umbrella. Okay, good. So what I have done is, um, what I've done, is before I got the other two members. I created a RFP for a water operator, created an RFP for legal. I created, when we got a, a, a group together, I created a uh, engineering RFP. Um, these are things that I did. I took my time to go ahead and do this. I've submitted these to the lawyer. The lawyer's the first ones looking at that um, engineering 
um, RFP, that's our first order of business right now, to get that done. So that we can put that out to bid, get a couple of different people to come in, give us a price of how much it's gonna cost to do it. Um, if we don't get this $40,000, we're still gonna pay it because we have $200,000 in, in our account that we can use for it. So it's available. The problem is there's been delay after delay after delay after delay, all right, with our board. And um, it, it's somewhat getting better now, um, but we're still not on track to see where we're at. In my opinion, we should have went and got a, um, a contract for an operator to get in there because the operator would be able to tell us what's wrong with it there, get it up and running because if something happens with Middleborough's water, yeah, there's no backup. We, we, we have, have no nothing. backup. Have and that's one of the things with water that I've found is that it's redundancy. Within the water system, you always want to have a backup of whatever you going on, and we don't have that now. We just we have Middleborough, which I'm so and I have to say I'm so happy that Middleborough has bailed us out numerous times, um, and I am committed to working with them and pretty much giving them whatever they want in order for us to get on track. Now, um, that being said. Um, the other members don't want to hire an operator until they get an engineering study, but we're going to have to pay that engineering people to come in and actually start the plan up. And that'll be done after the after the discovery from the grant, right? When no, no, no. Oh, well, yeah. Once we find out where the grant, you're right. Yeah. Once we find out where the grant is, then we put this the RFP out, find out, get them in there. But we're going to have to have a company that comes in is going to start that plant up. All right. Well, they have to. How are they going to analyze if it's not running? <laughs> That's what well, I've said all along. Well, I, you'd have to talk to engineers about that. That's not necessarily the case. I mean, we well, the good thing is we know the we know the plant can produce clean water, clean potable water for people to drink. We know that for a fact. The water samples that came out before they shut it down, perfect. All right, they took care of the manganese, they took care of the iron, all right, so it was clean, good, clean, potable water that people can drink. All right, so we know it can do that, but right now there's certain parts of it that need to be fixed. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, where the chemicals come out, uh, there's a, there was supposed to be a pump there to pump it out, but they took the pump off, and like I said, there's exposed wires, and then they said that uh, the operator says, well, this part of the system, we don't know what's wrong with it. We don't know. So, I mean, that has to be analyzed. Of why isn't this part of the system working? So without beating a dead horse, I mean, other, other, you know of other areas that have this type of system. You said there's one out in Rhode Island and stuff yeah. like that. So have you contacted other areas, other systems like this and said, like, who do you have that maintains your systems? Tried to contact them and see if they can come and take a look. So what I originally did is I put feelers out. The DEP has a list of operators. Got it. All right. They also have a list of companies that operate. Yep. All right. I took companies within um, a 50, 60 mile area from down the Cape all the way up. Um, I forget where the farthest one was. Um, and I put feelers out to them. I had a couple, couple of them that responded. I said, great, no problem. Um, they came in, they looked at it. I had uh, three operators. One said, no way. The other said, he's too busy. And the other guy that came in and looked at it, he finally turned around and says, you know what, this is not for me. And then um, uh, after I had place, I, I want to say in, um, in Taunton, I think it was, uh, that company, um, this other operator, he turned around and said, well, why don't you try Weston and Samson? All right, see what they have. So I did, I reached out to them and um, went back and forth and they never really came into it because I think they really want to um, wait till we actually get an RFP out before they, they'll turn around and do anything, which is fine. I just want to make, I want, my main goal was to get that system back up and running, all right, and to be able to have the system if it's needed. Um, so, um, let me see my notes here. So, the water plant itself, we have some decisions to make over the next few months um, to a year. Um, do we keep the system running as it is now with a Xenon system? All right, fix it up, get it up and running good. Um, repair all the damage and the lack of maintenance. Um, uh, do we com convert to the chlorine-based system and the green sand system? Uh, 
The other option is um, the water tower. Um, everything that I have read says you need a water tower. All right, with any plant, you need a water tower for that pressure, and um, we don't have one, but we need one. The the urban uh, the plan that they had is they need water for fire and they need water for potable use. Where that water tower goes and what size is really dependent because is I've seen two different ideas of uh, Hillwood came out with a number of what size it should be a hundred and twenty five twenty five thousand or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think it was 125,000 gallons yeah, yeah, gallon. tank, and another one, it was actually less. I think it was 100 where I said, or somewhere on that. Um, but if we have that size and how high it has to be for the pressure, then we have to look at the location of a water tower. So I've looked around at different areas, and um, my first priority is I went back to our intermissible agreement. Um, with the town, and in that agreement, it allows the North Cabo Water District to expand the water, um, the water plant, and to put a um, uh, a water tank or a standpipe, put one up. So we have that ability to put one right beside the plant. Is that the best option? I don't know. That's what the engineer is for. Where is the plant? It, it's inside the coal property. In, um, Easiest way, easiest down, way. By, down by the property that we're talking, where the uh, it's green? across the street. It's back in the no, no, woods no. behind Noria. E all right, easiest oh, way to right. just easy way to pick it. If you go down 58 yeah. into Plimpton, yeah, the guy has the uh, auto body repair shop there on the yeah. right hand side. He always has a sign with God loves you, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Bang a right there, go down there. As soon as you hit the shop turn, take a right. That's the North Cover, um, the coal property. Is, Another way to if you want if you guys if you guys want to come see it, I'll be happy to show you what it is. Um, after the meeting, get your number. No problem. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to go see. Um, another another way to know where it is, uh, Roger, is that if you're t if you're coming into Carver on 44, the solar panels on the right hand side of the road, it's mm -hmm. behind them. Yeah, it's north oh, okay. north of them. That's um, the coal property. The engineer's going to give you all the answers to those questions. By the way. Um, yeah. Well, see, that's the other thing is. The way the grant was written, I just got the grant uh, a couple of days ago from George actually sent it to me, um, and it, it's really specific in the way the grant was written, so I'm not sure if they're going to touch on the water tower itself. I thought that's what he was just talking about here a few minutes ago. He said you have to analyze what's there and then figure out how to make it work because that's right. why you do an engineering study. Exactly. So that's but the actual location of a water tower, like I said, I'm not sure. I've had our lawyer take a look at this and he hasn't gotten back to us yet, or I should say me, but for the board, uh, on does my um, RFP for an engineering match the R the grant application right. because if it doesn't I need to change it yep. I need to match the two okay, okay. I'm just my, wondering why you're doing an RFP before the engineer comes back and tells you what to do because we have to do an RFP for an engineer it's over thirty thousand dollars and but part isn't of that what 30B, this study is that he's already talking about that's what I thought it seems like the, you're double sprinting there to me if you already have a well, what what is the difference between the grant that we're getting here and what you want to do the grant is to pay for the engineering study there you go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But we we have to put out the RFP for different companies to do what we want in the RFP. So it's about doesn't, paying for Doesn't it. the grant cover that whoever the engineering firm is, they have to go through and do all their due diligence to figure it out? You shouldn't have to have somebody else come in. And, the whole idea of hiring an engineer for engineering firm is to do this for you. You shouldn't have to hire another company to come out and start the thing up for you. I mean, I've done this before. Oh, yeah. the, the grant so, runs as a reimbursement, right? It's, I'm not sure. Well, that's the thing is, I'm not sure if it's reimbursement or it's they'll turn around and, and they send you the money and anything left, you give it back. I'm not sure how the grant works. I had nothing to do with it. I have one question. George. One second, one second. I just want to. So this grant they put in was to pay for any engineering study that's done. Okay. So it doesn't allow them to to go and pick anybody else they want to do an engineering study anything over thirty thousand dollars okay 40. huh 40 well no they're 40. Getting, no they're... i'm talking about under 30b 
That's the procurement oh, laws okay. of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You can't turn around and decide that you only want Joe Schmo's engineering company to do it, okay? Because it's not fair. So you have to right. put it out to bid. You put it out to bid, you get the bids in, you open the bids up, and you turn around and you decide those bids, all right? It's just like, this is what I did. When, one second. When I went around, I went out to different uh, electricians, because the issues with the electricity there. Uh, I went out, and I didn't just go to this person I know in town and said, here you go, I'm going to do this. I didn't think that's fair. So I went to a couple of different places and got different bids for it, the work to be done. All right. Another member turned around and said, well, I got my friend, all right, who's done work for me. He turned around and said, well, he can do it this way. Okay. I don't think that's fair that this goes out and, and gives it to a friend. I want to make sure that everything that we do is legal and right and make sure that if we're going to put something out to bid, that it's fair for everyone. And that's what 30B is all about, is about being fair for right. bidding. And that's what it's for. Right. And this would be done whether or not we get the grant. Correct. It's, it's, the, the, rule, it's the law. Correct. So yeah. my question yes. is, George, when he spoke with us, that he included this engineering study that was done with Hillwood had this engineer. That's what uh, you're not starting from ground zero. That's right, the whole exactly. thing. That I'm, that's why I'm asking the question yeah, because right. you're not that's starting. That's why I'm a, asking it yeah. because it was it, it was George that said they included that in the um, in the RFP, uh, in no, the grant. In the, they yeah. included it, it in the grant. You've already George got a bunch that. of this work already done. That's right. Yeah, but they're going to they're so going to update that anyway. They, but you have that old. But you, you know, have to understand much. what was done with Hillwood was based on that. Right. project exactly. there. Yep. And guess what? They didn't know how bad this, from where it is back then to where it is now the way the plant is. The plant has degraded that much from that point to this point. Well, I mean, and, and that's where we're at. I, I think we can move on. I think this is just a lot of, that's just my opinion, but I think you're spinning your wheels on a lot that this will be covered. That's my, I, I'm just talking, that's my opinion. I mean, that's yeah, why no, you go out and you yeah, hire engineers right. and this but, is why you do things. And, I mean, I've built hundreds of projects. The basic understanding with Hillwood, and it was never, it was never memorialized on paper, but the basic understanding with Hillwood was that they were going to go in and fix the, the plant. And, and they were going to pipe pipe water to their a water tower on their property right up on the hill yeah, behind. Yeah, because they get the benefit out of it. But what right. I'm saying but is they were going to spend the, spend whatever it right. took to get the plant running. That We don't have that anymore. But, Hillwood's right. money is different than Route 44's so by quite a bit. If, if I can just, with the water tower itself, if we get a water tower, all right, like I said, we have the ability to do it on the coal property. We have that ability. Um, I pinpointed two different places. One's high with a where the water um, plant is, the, uh, another one's a little lower, which means we have to raise it up higher. The next one is actually on um, their property, on Route 44 development property. They have it as you drive in. There's a hill up there. Oh, yeah. It's a we higher know. area there. That's where that, it's going to go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's where a water tower could and be. And you can't placed. even see it from the road either. So right. George right. shouldn't have any issue with that. And then the third area, still within this area, is behind Noria. It's a privately owned property that we'd have to purchase that property for, all right, away from them, and put it right there. Um, one of the benefits of that is it's got exposure. So you have advertising costs that you could turn around and put advertising on there. You could do other right. things with it uh, for money coming in. It's halfway between them both. And it's yeah. halfway between the both. So, I mean, those are pretty much the options. Um, one of the options somebody else had said was on top of the um, uh, North Cabo landfill. Well, that ain't going to happen right now. That, I mean, that's a little too yeah, obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So More than that, say, it's sinking. Yeah. Come on. Whatever. <laughs> but needless to say, I mean, those are all possibilities of where it can go, in my opinion. All right. And yes, in engineering, hopefully it'll cover that and we'll see we'll see what happens that, i mean that property behind nori is is zone commercial as well it is it's zone commercial that too. someday 15, 15 I acres i looked it up yeah. right. someday that's going to be wetlands too okay. that's something that's going to be worth yeah, some money it's going to be something so different that's than it is hire a firm for but I mean, you should contact his people your people and see what helps out all right okay. um the next thing I, 
just to discuss is um, the meeting with the select board that they had. Um, I just watched it there. Um, the the North Carver Water District and the Town of Carver, this, this is our contract with them. This is the intermissible agreement. Um, it sets in place what the district will do and what the town will do. All right, so in this, we've already have the ability to do repairs to all the water lines um, without asking the select board permission for it. Um, we can enlarge it, we can small, we can make changes, whatever we want. This gives us that ability, all right? The select board have no control over the North Cabo Water District except the money aspect that uh, there's an enterprise fund. All right, that's how the Board of Selectmen come in, is the money aspect. The Board of Selectmen does not do our water rates. That's the North Cabo Water District. Okay, they don't do uh, an intermissible agreement between Middleborough and the North Cabo Water District. They don't do that. The agreement will have to be between the North Cabo Water District and Middleborough. And that's what we're working on. We want to get an agreement with Middleborough to deal with all the other issues that related to um, the DEP. They want a distribution operator uh, just for the distribution of water going to Carver. And um, we have to memorialize it in paper. We also have, they've been doing all of our water reports, um, testing, uh, they've changed out meters. And these are the things that we need to negotiate with them of how much this is all costing so that it's in paper and documented that this is what we do and in this agreement is there's no time frame right now in the other agreements between the town of Carver the North Carver Water District and it's very discombobulated these other agreements the way they're crafted um, because they all use Copeland and Page and it's very difficult to determine but to find out how long is Milbar willing to give us water, that's going to be a discussion, and also are they willing for a, a short-term or a long-term agreement. These are things that we're going to have to discuss and how much are they willing to do. Um, and we don't know that. These, we haven't had discussions with them on it, and I'm hoping October 1st we'll sit down and have a, a meeting with them and discuss what they want from us, and then we can tell them, well, this is what we like from you guys. Are you willing to do this, and how much is it going to cost us to do this? Um, knowing that it's going to cost us a premium to deal with Middleborough. Um, and to be honest, right now, I don't have a problem paying anything because we have to provide water to the restaurant residents that we have. Um, but uh, with concerns of the Board of Selectmen as be having a, a, a seat at the table, um, what I said to the chairman of the Board of Selectmen is that we should get an agreement between the Board of Selectmen and the North Cabo Water District on the services that the town provides to the district, i.e. the secretarial cost, uh, accounting, um, billing, um, any type of uh, the maintenance, operation and maintenance, how much they pay uh, to do work for us, plowing, whatever it may be. Um, but we have to have that information. And that would have to be a separate agreement with Carver. But the goal here is to make sure that we can provide water. Um, in relation to the uh, North Carver Water District and Urban Renewal Plan, I'm solely on board of getting water to the Urban Renewal Plan. No matter who gets in there, I want to get them water. Okay, so we have to look at other options for water too if we get it up and running. Everything's on the table, in my opinion. Um, go into Plymouth, say, hey, Plymouth, you need water. All right, we get this up and running. You want to turn around and, and tap into us? Maybe we do that. Plimpton, too. Um, all the way out to Bridgewater. I mean, Brockton takes water from Pembroke and brings it all the way to Brockton. I mean, maybe Bridgewater might want some water. I mean, we have to look at all options of our water that we have and what we can do for it and to make it as least costly for the town residents. So we have a tentative date, April April 25, mm -hmm. where ground is going to be start being broke to begin. So he, so we basically have a timeline for him to say, we have to have something workable yeah. by 
April. Well, I would the, well, the beginning gotta, of the I year mean, anyway. It's got to be long before April. It's got to yeah. be the beginning right. of the yeah. year. But I mean, yeah. you have to that have guy's something That guy's not going to move any dirt without having enough water to Right, die. exactly. But he's I mean, not signing any papers either. Yeah, I mean, he's not. I mean, I wouldn't. But we have to have something it's kind working of an important by. Thing. So what do you think? He's got to have something done by February, latest. Well, if George so is going to go line up all those more. contractors, yeah. Yeah, I think he's going to take at least a, talking to him. In my opinion, it's going to take at least a month, a month and a half of engineering to study to come back, all right, for them to do everything they need to do. Um, like I said, we have to find out if whatever company that we get, if, say Weston and Samson, just using them out there, say they turn around and they bid into this, they have operators that can come in because they have an engineering service for it. Um, there's another company out there um, that has everyone, has the engineering costs, they have the operators, they know how to run the system, so they can come in there and do that. Um, the computer system's old, needs to be updated. Um, the touch pads that they have all need to be replaced because they're yeah. old and have to be done. So all these things that when they evaluate it, they're gonna evaluate and say, okay, we know those all need to be re redone and repaired, uh, replaced, I should say. But um, the cost on that, that's what we're going to look for. How much is it going to cost? And we don't know. I'm just saying you've got six months, a tight, yes. a tight line <laughs> to, to come up with all this stuff and have it done six months. We, if we have to hire an operator to come in there and provide water, it's going to take about 20 to 30 days for it to get up and running producing water because it's not like you just turn the turn it on you don't you have to flush everything out then you have to go ahead and start slowly integrating the chemicals to the water to get the right pH balance to do one part and then you switch it over to do another part then you start combining them a little bit more and a little bit more so you get like I said, it was running fine. It just takes time, but they still have to repair. The minute so that guy starts moving dirt, it'll be a year before he's ready to. Well, if he knows it's going to happen, he'll put, I mean, he can put it won't in. It won't take that long, but it'll be it'll be longer than a year before anybody's ready to yeah. do anything. Yeah. One of the things he did say is that one of the companies will have a lot of. Um, Motor vehicle excise. Yeah, excise. You talked about excise tag. He told us that. So that means that. that's a vehicle. That's it's going to be some type of a, a vehicle place, a distributor of some port, or drivers or whatever going someplace. Who knows? All right. Um, it, it it could be DEP. It, it could be a, a a company. I mean, who knows? Well, that goes all over the place. That's what Cisco told Plimpton too. Mm -hmm. Well, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, who knows? We don't know. Um, but these are small smaller projects. Yeah. In the whole. But I, all I can tell you right now is the the North Cabo Water District will do our best to get things done and keep you guys updated because it's important that you guys know what's going on. Oh, definitely. Uh, you guys basically represent the town and the developer to get things up and running and make sure that, that everyone's on the same page. One of the big things that I, I brought out at our meeting, I hopefully you guys will watch it. If you haven't watched it on the RDA meeting, I mean, the North Cabo Water District is that, I mean, I had said, what if the town can't provide him water? What's going to happen? Oh, you asked the question. You, I, I took these notes. You asked George that. Yeah, and he hesitated. Uh, 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 he said, um, Bob says, how does that affect? George says, we have a contract. I don't know if he does. Spent a lot of money and so forth, he said, and we're willing to work to put the plant up and running. Willing to work is, yeah, is, yeah in, in combination. What, what he doesn't, he doesn't want to own the plant. He doesn't right. want to be a water no. operator. He does no. not want I that at all. Real estate too. developers are not in the business of <laughs> exactly. providing utilities. He doesn't want to do that because that was one of the things we could sell it to. He doesn't want it. Hmm. it, it it, it, this is just a set of keys when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. So here you take it, just like a road or anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I mean, hopefully we figure out what's going to go on. And um, yeah, right now I can tell you is that I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen. I know there's a, I know there's a faction in town that wants it shut down. All right, there's another one that turns around and says, no, we need to keep it running. We get it back and up and running. There's another faction that turns around and says, just give it to the board of selectmen and let them deal with it. Well, you know no. what? No. No. <laughs> no, you know what? These are, the, these are what's on the table. 
and, and I'm not afraid, all right? I want to make sure if that ever comes to fruition is that it's done for the right reasons. Okay, don't do it because, well, Bob Delvin's in there. Because that's what's happened in the past, and guess what? This is not the way to do it. All right, there's a problem. Let's fix it. Let's get it up and running. All right, and let's provide water to our residents because we're going to need more water in the future. It's just a matter of fact. And we spent $6 million on this plant plus the land that it's on, and um, yeah. So let me just ask you, you say up and running. When you say up and running, the plant, the, the plant, means that you can't, because of the, because of the condition of it, you cannot have carver water going through the same pipes as Middleborough. Correct. So when you get this plant up and running, uh, Middleborough has to be shut off. Yes. Okay. That's a that's a quite a decision, right? It, it, if that if that happens, there are other options. Um, so so let me finish. Yeah. So in this process of engineering and getting costs, and you've mentioned several times making the plant compatible with um, uh, Middleborough, compatible with Plymouth, why not go that route? We have to figure out how much it costs. No, it doesn't, forget the money. I mean, just think of the reality. Yeah. Just think of the reality that when you want to transition and you want to go back and have uh, uh, Middleborough help you for whatever reason, you ha it has to be compatible. What a mess. How do you clean the pipes? I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, tag that, that, that makes no sense. Tagging on to what Joanna's just saying, because that was my question, one of my questions. Is the xenon technology the next big thing or is it just static or is it slowly fading away <laughs> so it's you go back to years ago when they put it in I, I think it was a cheaper option at that point okay great and that's why okay, they picked it probably. in my opinion that's why they picked it um, and it could be built quickly, too, to some extent. Okay. Uh, I think what you're going to find is any decent engineering firm, when you talk about redundancy and everything else, they're going to try and find a way that should the thing crap out at some sort certain point in time, that there's going to be somewhere else you can get water from. So it's not just leaving a whole bunch of people without anything. Yeah. So, I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. if that was my engineer working for me, that's how I would tell them to do it. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah. You already talked about it. you need a plan B. I mean, people in their houses can't be without water. But you got to sure understand, you can, there, the compatibility, there's no compatibility. It is that, a yeah. mess. I understand all it's of that. It's a mess. That saying, is I mean, not a solve. That's, to me, that's not a solution. Well, making it compatible, I think it's actually no. No, yeah, making no, compatible making is compatible. the solution. Yeah, I think that's the only solution. Just get it thing. up and running in the hell with it. That, that that's where I'm going. Please, that's why I don't know why we're spending our wheels. Spending more money when we should just let the engineer figure it out. put in place because we're a smaller That's what they get paid at that time. Yeah. And you already because have an engineer from the previous guys. Yeah. You know, all farmlands, and we weren't a big community at that time. Well, I you know, the, the area of contamination, which first uh, made it necessary to have North Carver Carver Water District, is expanding. Yeah. You know, right. they just You added another 40 homes a couple years ago, right? Yeah, 40 right. or something homes. So, so there you go. And it's going to expand. It doesn't just stay there. I, I took expand. down as 131 okay. on Middle yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> I took one of the other notes. options could be is... Um, we could do a hybrid model, and we'll talk to middle world about this, is where residential, so from if you look at Plymouth Street here, um, that we put a stop at Plymouth Street, so only the commercial from Plymouth Street east to Plimpton would be on North Cabo Water District water and keep the residents on Middleborough water, uh, whereas we now have a... North Cabo Water just covers the commercial base in that area only, and that would reduce the amount of a water tank we would need. We'd still need a water tank, a water tower, or whatnot, but it would reduce the need for a, a bigger one so we could do a smaller one. And this is engineering. We'll have to decide this, too, because that will be on my list of but things. But isn't your first discussion with Middleborough very, like, 100,000 feet? discussion about what are they going to want if we tie into this and if we get this water plant back up and running and all that kind of stuff isn't that really where you want to start until you get this engineering study back to figure so, out what you're going to do so the what we have to talk to Middleborough about is 
the short term. The short term is uh, we already got the water rates. That's nothing. We don't have to deal with that. But we have to deal with uh, getting them on as our uh, plant um, distribution operator to satisfy the DEP. Uh, so that's going to cost us because their person has to sign on all the documents. Uh, all the water tests that are being done, cross contection testing. Um, then we also have to talk about water meters. We have 100 meters that need to be replaced because they're old, um, they, they don't work. It's all right. It's not big money. Hmm? It's, not big money. So it's like $160 per meter and then the installation of it. So, but. The North Carolina Water District, we don't have staff to do that. If we had a, an operator, they would be doing that for us. But we don't. So we have to negotiate with them as how much are they going to pay for them and also how much to install each one. They've already installed some of them that are already broken. They've already done that for us. We haven't received the bill for it. We received one bill uh, for water. But we have to negotiate this stuff. And these are the short-term negotiating. The long-term is... Do they want to keep us on long term or not? And how much are they willing to do? We're not at that point yet. We're not at that no. point until we do the engineering study and, and to see where we're at there. But you want a scalable solution? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So <clears throat> if you look towards this, uh, the green solution, and move on that one, it sounds like the best object. You know, you're going to be able to work with Middleborough, Plymouth, move out this old one, and make the town a lot happier, at least the North Garver. Yeah. What's the one thing I saw in this? I don't know if you covered it because we've been talking so long. The privilege fee? Yeah, I, you know what? I'm not even interested in privilege fee right now. Not to say that we're not going to do one. It's just it has not even been discussed because we're not there. But, but your elevator, since it's on here, I just want to cover it. What's your elevator speech on this privilege fee? What is that? A buy-in for residents or more commercial? Or? So uh, for residents, it's... Um, What's it called? Um, can you? I, I have it. Can, can you? Want to read it out? Go ahead. Yeah. Let me do this. Um, uh, a this came from uh, Kevin because I personally asked him that question. He said that uh, uh, the landowner. Uh, well, he said they would then assess the fee base. Is that what you sent in the email? I did. It's right yes. in the back of our yes, minutes. It's by the way, right. it's right in the back of the minutes. Uh, the landowner, the, 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 I thought I marked it here. They would then assess a fee based on the request of GPD. Okay. Uh, okay, it's covered over here. Yeah, okay. they would then assess a fee based on the request of GPD. I don't know what she said that. The landowner could then request an in kind exchange. That's. That's it, okay. in kind exchange. As an example, landowner requests 35,000 gallons per day times the current cost per assessment unit of $49.25, I don't think it's dollars, 4920.25 equals 1723750 The landowner agrees to build a standpipe as an alternative to the assessment. Win-win. To be clear, these are decisions for current and future water commissioners. So that was with Hillwood. Right. That was with Hillwood. So um, with residents, it, it's like a betterment. It's a betterment fee. All right, that they did, and the water commissioners back then for all the residents is the residents had to prove that it wasn't getting on town water wasn't a betterment to them. And that's what a lot of people did. They came in and said, it's not betterment. It's, it's not making my property any better to have town water. All right? A lot of them are forced to, were forced to do Supposed it. Supposed to. No, they were forced, they, yeah. they were forced to put, get on it. So, and even being on, on it, it's no benefit to them because it's costing them more money is if they had water themselves, running it themselves. Right, they didn't run well. Until it, well. Until it yeah, gets contaminated. Yeah. But that's not their fault. That's the town's fault. Right. The contamination is the town's fault. Okay. All right. But needless to What's say, <laughs> the um, whatever we do to um, the developer, all right, for water, we're not there yet. We won't be there until we find out what's going on. And I don't even want to estimate how much we're going to ask from the developer. I really don't want to because 
we don't, have, you don't, we don't know. have anything. We don't know. Yeah. We don't have anything to generally do with them. So, uh, so bottom line, let's circle around okay. what's going to happen with you, because it interests us for George. In October, you're going to be talking to Middleborough. Okay. Sometimes at the end of September, the grant should be disclosed, if not, right? It's a win or not win. However, you have, the North Cover Water District has $40,000 to go ahead with this RFP for the engineering, correct? Yes. Okay. Meanwhile, George is trying to, I don't know what he's trying to do, trying to either get more people or get these two people, but he can't really do much because he can't really promise them water. Right. Well, he's going to do it with a, he'll say that he's going to provide a certain amount because that's the only way, it, he'll just never get the deal signed until it's done. Okay. Right. It'll sit there in a, you know, letter of intent and it'll just sit there. Okay. Now, George, when he came to him, he says he has a contract. I didn't hear Tom Bott talk about any contract. Contract for what? To, to get water. Sell the, to, to, sell get the water. to get water. To, to get, get water. water. And Bob says, as he read it, the urban renewal plan, if that's what he's talking about, the urban renewal plan does say water structure, does say water, potable water is maybe, and I have to assume, that maybe George is, this is what he's going by, the urban renewal plan that, he, that was created for, for Route 44 and signed off by all the select board. The last thing I have to say about this whole thing is, you have to understand, the town got three point something million dollars, three point three million dollars, three point one, whatever it is, for road infrastructure for that, sh from Route 58 to get into that complex. Max with Works. A light, with a Max yeah. Works, okay? For the intent to develop that site. Yep. Yes, All right? That's yep. right. Water lines were put in, as far as I, I yep. they put water lines in under the air too, with the sole intent to get water to them, that project, okay? George put in another seven or eight hundred thousand dollars, yeah. matching yeah. grants to that. Right, to bring right. it up to yeah. four. Now, whatever they want to say at the town side that says there's no contract there, you know what? There's enough here, there's enough with the infrastructure through the three million dollars, all right, if this falls through, my feeling, if the water falls there, then we can't get them water, okay? We owe 400, four million dollars to someone. I think the state's gonna come after yep. us for money. Yep. George is gonna come after us for money, oh, okay? <laughs> and yep. he's not gonna, he's gonna come after the town, the RDA, the North Cabo Water Districts, all right? And I'm making it clear that I am doing my best, all right, to provide him water. I'm going to do my best and do everything I can to do it in some way, shape, or more, way, shape, or means mm -hmm. um, to do it. I may get stopped at some point. Who knows? I don't know, but I can only work toward one thing, and it's the same goal that you guys need to have to get this urban renewal plan done and over with, to get it off your plate, and you can do other things right. in your life. Yep. All right? But it is what it is, and thank you very much. All right, I have one other question, and it's it basically um, uh, it's a little bit off off to the side. Since since this since our um, our current plan is inoperable, and it's going to take money to fix that to give residents clean drinking water, is there any money available from the state to help repair? Thank you. Yes. There is state and federal funding to help fix small water systems. Um, there's one I just I read today just on cybersecurity to do that. Okay. But um, I was up in uh, Maine, and that town got seven or eight million dollars to oh, help wow. fix their water system. Okay. What town was it? Um, Oh, you had to ask me now. Sorry. Um, Booth Bay Harbor. Booth Bay Booth Harbor. Bay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's out there. Then I found out from another town, i.e. Pembroke, they used state funds.
for buying all the cranberry box in Pembroke. They used it they to used buy it? the box. Mm -hmm. You know why they said it? They got that because they said they're protecting the water. Interesting. Wow. I've wow. been saying, why don't we buy some of these bogs that are now cranberry bogs? But think about that. If we get state and federal funding to buy some of these uh, properties, mm -hmm. all right, and the only thing we have to t say is we're there to protect the water. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's money out there, and that's what was told to me. There's money out there to buy properties to protect the water. So, just an FYI. Interesting. Um, Interesting. For future. So there's money out there. You just got to look for it. There's um, the state and federal, they both have uh, different um, websites you can go to look for certain grants for certain different things. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things with, with George, because we did discuss this, and I have been in touch with George. I have his phone number. He follows mine and whatever. But um, he's willing to help with grant writing to help get funds for the North Cobble Water District. Oh, good. I was just going to ask that so question. So he said that when we had that meeting with him when he was yeah. on the Zoom. Right. He's willing to do this. My thing is that we're not at that point to ask him for his help at this point. Yeah, um, you don't know what we need. Exactly. Yeah. Once we are, I said, we'll probably go into you and ask him for help. Okay. All right. So there you go. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Um, that's good to know that there is money out there, and, and uh, you know this has been a, an ongoing issue. I mean, the, you know, North Carver water is turned on, then it's turned off, and it's turned. It's not sustainable to do that to keep doing that way. So it's got to be fixed. Um, you know, and I think that in long term, I mean, even though you said I, I'm interested, I'm curious about the hybrid. I like that idea to a certain extent, but I don't. I can see how that would require a smaller tank, but. I think that that might be a little short-sighted to do a smaller tank, knowing that the property up there is, you know, on, behind Noria is commercial and not developed yet, and it's, you know, there's a possibility there that could be something that would need more water. Um, but it's interesting to uh, it, it's interesting to think that, um, you know, the, the commercial gets North Carver water and the residential gets Middleborough. A lot of development going on up there. Yeah, interesting. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate it. And anytime you guys need me, let me know okay. uh, if I can get you any information. I, let okay. me just give you one more thing that I took as a note. Um, he talked about... Who's he? Uh, Hill, uh, George. George, when he was on his on that party, uh, program of the uh, North Carolina. Uh, they talked about fire suppression, and he said he... Uh, with new tenants, he wants to build uh, modular. He wants to add on. Can you can you expand on that one? In other words, right now he says Sit the tenants down. itself is six hundred thousand square feet. Those are two users. They only say they figured out that it was figured that we only need one thousand to two thousand gallons a day. So he said that he, it would need a smaller for fire suppression now. Would have a smaller tank to suffice for what happened. Mm -hmm. Now, as he sells more of this property, he just wants to create what he calls a modular type system. Okay, so that he can it's just expandable. Expandable. Yeah. yeah, so that kind of. Isn't that what Hillwood was going to be doing to it? Well, not, not really. They may have been doing something modular, but they knew going in that they were going to build 1.8 million square oh, feet. Okay. So they had that fire suppression separate tanks set up specifically for that square footage. Oh, okay. And I think it was three tanks. I think it was three separate tanks they were okay. going to they use. They also were going to have different buildings, weren't they? They are going to have a few off. Two, two yeah. buildings. But I, it was the, the fire suppression separate tanks were for the exterior for possible fires of trucks, and, uh, mm. et cetera. So based on how much square feet and the amount of parking that they were going to have to, to uh, supply uh, whatever they needed for the, the warehouses, that's how big they were going to make their fire suppression water system, which was completely independent from their, uh, from their tying into North Carver Water District. They were not, uh, they were not the same at all. Just hope they're not electric it? vehicles. Hmm? Just hope they're not electric vehicles. <laughs> yeah. um, when they say modular... That time has changed, right? Here we go. In my opinion, I was thinking the sense of 
like a shipping container with a bladder on the inside of that. Yeah. All right, and then they can just attach that. You also have to understand on that property, there's a retention pond there too. Yes. On site. Can they use the cranberry box? Melville's cranberry bog. They can ha use it the has retention a, pool. If it they has need. a they, water they, hole. Exactly. They can use the retention because they draft, they draft or whatever it's called, drafting. Draw. Where they put the, yeah. um, the the pump in and they pump the water out. Yeah. So that's another water source for them also right. for the exterior. You wouldn't use it for interior, yeah. but the exterior yeah, of it, exactly. if there was. Yeah. But that's a possibility. Plus, you right. have to understand there's also a water um, a pole site on that road. They had two yeah. for the for the fire department to use yes. to take water out of there too. No, oh, there is a road. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on the left hand side. When you come in, it's on the left hand side. Yeah. Oh. They have that. Um, but needless to say, that was my opinion is that that's what it'd be uh, a bladder type system that they would use mm -hmm. uh, and just have a series of, because the military uses that all the time in a container with bladders with water in it. And you just turn around and pump yeah. that out. Yeah, I think Hillwood was, was going to use like a round, a round metal container, container. with a bladder yeah. inside it, but buried yep. underground. Yeah. Yeah. And I, just let, for this is that even at the North Cowell water plant, we have four uh, exterior tanks, 10,000 gallons of water. That's in the ground mm -hmm. right now. There's four oh, of it's still holding. So there's 40,000 gallons of water right there right. Uh, for us. Um, but it's just sitting vacant right now, and luckily it's just covered up. Right, and, and we'll always need a pump to get it somewhere. And you always need a pump. And that's the one they yeah. discontinued? They disconnected that pump? <laughs> Only, yeah. yeah. They probably yeah. did. All right, All right. Thank, well, you. thank you guys you very, very much. much. Thanks. Thank you. Well, what, we got an air full of plus here. All right, we, the next thing I want to talk about is vacancy. We've kind of been running around, running around. We even had an interview, which went nowhere. The minutes itself did say, uh, uh, Savory said he suggested opened in 9-30-2024, and we all agreed upon that. So I think I need to go back to Jill and say, hey, Jill, put, put an end date, 9-30-2024. However, we have not reorged if it's appropriate at this point. To uh, no, we have to. We should wait on that, uh, Joanne, okay. till All the right. end of the meeting when we talk about, about things member comments? about well things that were not an anticipated. Well, I took that out because uh, Tom Bot said sometimes you can get in trouble with that, so I took it well, out. But under member comments, we can do that then. We, we yes. can do it then. Okay, fine. Treasurer's report. Um, I gave you each a uh, copy of that, and it goes to August and. Um, Uh, Sue Hannon is, has an outstanding, she didn't cash anything, but the interest did come in. And so on August uh, 31st, we did uh, receive interest on the uh, savings, RDA savings account of $10.24. And then on the urban renewal oh, plan, it's always a penny. So the bottom line in our checking is $878.99 in our savings account, RDA account, is 48,353.04. Uh, and in the plan account, the urban renewal plan, that's the one, uh, Jim, that's the one that uh, Route 44 mm -hmm. is supposed to keep putting money in there. We okay. started with 22,000 and then we were using it as time went on because we had in legal fees and so forth. But that's down to, uh, $1,280.56. So that's that's it. So if we can um, agree make, upon that and have a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, the um, September Treasurer's Report as uh, submitted. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Being none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's, that's passed. I had some members' notes I was starting to look at, and I, I'll probably go back because Tom Bott opened the door about an agreement, and I was looking for that. And I've been on this committee the longest than anybody else has. <laughs> so if I can find something, I'm going to find it. Now, in my mind is there is something that there is something that we had during the Route 44. It was a combination joint meeting. And they all signed off on this urban renewal plan. Okay. I don't know legally how that all stands, but 
as Bob read some of that infrastructure and the way it was written and so forth. But I also remember that Milanowski was the town administrator then. And Milanowski had applied for the mass the Mass Works Grant. He had been for, yeah, for he'd been road. up to the State Department so yeah. many times to get this all going. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen something, but I can't remember where I saw it. And that's my biggest problem. If I read something, I should be writing it down in case I want to go back. But I, pl I plan on going back to see if I can't bring something up, and definitely by next uh, meeting. <clears throat> well, I think there are two things that... Um, um, that you need to uh, get an answer to. Okay. Uh, and and one is the fact that Will Sinclair, based on the minutes, said uh, told you that yes, they had a guarantee. Yes. Yes. And I, I think that I think that you know just saying that yes, they have a guarantee doesn't say where that guarantee is written. That's right. I'll go back. I and I would say that the same question applies to George, who says that he has a contract. Okay. So that's Should, two areas. Yes. Have Will. Find, tell you where you can find that guarantee yeah. in writing yeah. between North Carver Water District or the town and George and have George send you a copy of whatever contract he's talking about. Okay. Because evidently no one else can find them. And it could be that George is looking at the urban renewal plan saying, this is my contract. It, tell, it tells me I can get water. I kind of think so. Okay. Anyway, and, and if that's the answer, that's fine. That's fine. Then yeah. he needs to tell us that. He needs to tell us that. Right. All right. So, but with that, <laughs> with the urban renewal plan, wasn't... Okay, so the urban renewal plan is separate from the actual formal deal that was with Hillwood. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the formative plan, which is the urban renewal is itself a plan, a project that goes on. What yeah. was a project, an internal project, was the Hillwood, what was Hillwood, but that has gone squashed, it's gone. It's, right. It, but, so, but urban renewal, that project with the urban renewal Route plan. 44 of them working with the project, we guaranteed them certain things, and that's the contract the, we're talking about, that they're going to... The urban build. renewal plan guarantees whoever builds there, yep. water. We'll have, okay. Uh, uh, that, and the urban renewal plan is open-ended. It is not It is not directed at any one Got it. owner, builder, developer. Okay. It's, it's, it's how that property is dealt with um, from, from the standpoint of uh, what, what promises are made regarding that property to whoever is going to do anything with it. And that was, uh, that was voted on. Yeah. Now my question to you, Savory, as well, is does does this latest whatever's happened here cause us or cause MEPA to come back and take a look? Because this is a major change. We don't know that we yet. We don't know that yet. Okay, that's it. We don't know it, that it yet. It may end up being exactly the way it's supposed to be, which is that, you know, that the North Carver Water District um, find, they get their engineering report, they find out what they have to do to fix it, they get grant money to fix it, George helps out, and then we're right back where we started pre-Hillwood with, you know, with water being and available. That, that's the whole key. you got to have this engineering report before. I mean, we talked yeah. an hour and a half tonight about stuff that... Right. We don't really need to talk about it until we get this report back that tells us what we right. need to do. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just my two cents. I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just a, we're spinning a lot of wheels. Talking well, about I, actually, stuff. there were some good stuff that came out of that as far as, as facts are concerned about, you know, where things stood uh, that I wasn't aware of. But, yes, the engineering report is, is yeah, the next logical the step and, yeah. and is the is the key to the, key to the engine. And it'll also be the key to talking to Middleborough and everybody else, too. Oh, yeah, You'll definitely. find out what the final product's kind of going to look like, and then they're going to get a better idea of you right. know, how they're going to be involved. Just, yeah, yes, ready? exactly. The thing with Middleborough, though, and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and Bob didn't bring that up, is that if they say yes now for short term, uh, Middleborough is growing, Carver certainly is growing. At some point, uh, they may not be able to provide what we need anymore. Right. Um, and, you know, then, then we're under the... Uh, under the gun to do it ourselves. 
So, uh, and I think that's what George is looking at when he wants to make the North Carver Water District compatible, compatible, and and up and running. Yes, yeah, right. Because well. then he doesn't have to worry about another town saying, "Sorry, we're cutting you off." Yeah, yeah. yeah very exciting. Let me just ask before we decide this next meeting. There was something bought. Tom left. What did he leave? He left. Look, I, he I scooted it down to you. Oh, I might have put. Oh, I you want to grab it? I put it sideways to I scoot might. down to you. Oh, okay. I grab it by mistake here. Yeah. I'll photo and give it? it back to you guys, but I no, would, I'll follow up with yeah, this. This is George it. and this is it. And Will St. Clair. So yeah, I want to see. Somebody scan it. And that's yeah. what makes sense. But that's I'll, what makes I'll, sense is that we build it. We start keep yeah. working with Middleborough. Yeah. Yeah. Get ourselves paced. Work with it for a while, and then we can take take with it, run with it, and grow. And I think it's great that he did answer a whole bunch of questions for us. But I understand you, total boots on the ground. It's not some of this isn't necessary until we're ready to deal with it. Right. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Next meeting. That was next. Or do we um, have to approve the minutes first? Yeah. We can approve the minutes. Has anyone read them? Has everyone yeah, read them? Yeah, I no. personally have. I don't I know did if too. anybody yeah. else has. I, I had no see, real. I didn't see anything wrong. Right, I'll make an. I'll make a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of uh, August sixth meeting as written. Uh, a second. Okay. So, if there's any further discussion? No. Uh, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 So it's approved. All right. So, well, on, well, let's go to, back to members' notes. I think that Joanna, you had uh, talked about um, reorganization. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that you know we're we're not the people aren't beating down the door to join our little happy group. <laughs> yeah, I think um, we could say that. Yeah. So I would think that um, if not at the next meeting, but the meeting after that, which would be November, November, that we should probably do a reorganization, uh, regardless of whether we have four members or five. Okay. All right, and the reason I say that is that the next meeting, if we have a meeting in October, I won't be here. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm away a lot in October. Okay. So. Um, well, that makes three of us. Are you going to be able to continue to come to the meetings? Like next month, he's going to be away. We have to have a quorum. What date? I, I know. Well, what that's we where plan? we're going to come up with the second. Second week. It would be the 8th. Yeah. So what's that, Tuesday? Tuesday's the 8th. Eighth. I should be, I think I'm still here. Fine with me. Okay. Okay. What about you? Um, uh, Over here. No, I he's, said, o he's okay. Yeah, I'm good. He's good. And Roger, you, you're, you're yeah. good? Okay. Let's go with that. So October, Tuesday to October the 8th. Okay. So it'll be the three of us. Okay. Going someplace good, I hope. I am. Okay. I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to show up. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to a music festival. No. You... But I'm I'm away for quite a while. Um, Contiguous or back and forth? Sort of back and forth. But, oh, all right. Uh, fluid, flexible. All right. All right. So it's now 8. Ready to adjourn here? Yeah, motion uh, Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 It is. Give me a number. Eight. Twelve. Eight, twelve. Okay, thank you.